The entire world came to an end when meteors and comets destroyed technology and all of humanity's inventions and civilizations. Only a few regions survived. Humans, reduced to a primitive state, began to struggle and survival became the law of the land. They built walls around these cities to protect them from both criminals and savage humans. Outside the city walls, there were criminals and people whose job was to transport goods from one city to another. They constantly faced great risks. Among these people was a man named John and his vehicle was called Evelyn. He had a specially equipped car for transporting goods and had all the necessary protection. John was the most famous transporter because he had a vehicle dedicated to this purpose and could escape from the criminals. We see John trying to escape escape from the criminals in his car, firing at them from all directions. He had a shipment to deliver, and the criminals chased him to steal it. But John was faster and more experienced in evading them, defeating them all. John succeeded in delivering the shipment safely. The soldiers inspected him for security reasons, and he showed them his metal identity with the name John. In return, he received gasoline, food, and ammunition. He was given a new shipment to deliver to the city of San Francisco. John took the shipment and set off in his car to make the delivery. While driving under a bridge, a man jumped on his car, wanting to steal it. John pulled out a gun from the car roof and easily killed the man. John stopped to rest and have some food. He took out an old picture and remembered his childhood with his parents. We learned that John had spent 20 years alone. After a few days, John managed to reach San Francisco. At the city's border, many homeless people were searching for food in the garbage. John looked at them, deeply affected. He reached his destination and they opened the city gate for him. However, he didn't enter and delivered the shipment. A surprise awaited John because they told him they wanted him inside the city. This was the first time John could enter a walled city. They took him, completely sterilized him, and provided him with new clean clothes. John was very happy to be inside the city. Later, after they blindfolded him so he wouldn't know the way, he met Revelyn, the city's leader. Revelyn told him that many people like him were dealt with, but most of them died because their tasks were full of risks. She told him that he was the only one who continued with them, which meant he was intelligent and skilled. She wanted him to prepare for a shipment from Chicago. John told her that it would be a long and extremely dangerous mission, nearly impossible to succeed. But Revelyn assured him that if he succeeded, she would grant him permission to live in San Francisco. Revelyn took John on a tour of the city, and he saw the people in it living happily, with children attending schools joyfully. John was content with life in San Francisco. Then, two siblings, a man and a woman, who had stolen a car were being chased by the police. The police managed to apprehend them and blew up their stolen car. Meanwhile, Revelyn introduced John to her husband and their little child. She prepared a delicious meal for him, and John was very pleased. John agreed to Revelyn's offer because he had lived with his family in the past and wanted to live in a place like San Francisco. She gave him a watch and told him that the mission should not take more than 10 days. Any delay would render the offer void. John took the watch and assured Revelyn that he would complete the task on time and not to worry. However, it was clear that Revelyn was deceiving John because the child wasn't hers and the man wasn't her husband. Now, let's go back to the officers. When they captured the criminals, Officer Stone gave them two options, one of them could sacrifice themselves, and the other would go free or they both would be killed. The brother chose to sacrifice himself and shot himself to save his sister. Officer Stone marked the sister's arm to indicate she was a criminal. Now, back to John, who went to visit his friend Tommy, a mapmaker, to obtain a map to help him reach Chicago. John asked Tommy to create a map for him to reach Chicago. Tommy was upset when he heard this and sensed the danger of the journey. Next, we encounter a huge man wearing a clown mask in a massive car, seemingly preparing to kill someone. On the road, John was looking at the map when suddenly a girl appeared in front of the car. He tried to avoid hitting her. When John stopped, the girl pointed a gun at him and demanded he get out of the car, intending to steal it. John got out quickly and pulled out a knife and a gun. A large and bizarre car, driven by the clown, appeared. It had a clown head on it, and the driver appeared to be a ruthless criminal. At that moment, John, the girl, and the clown began a shootout. They managed to shoot down the clown. Afterward, a chase ensued between John and the clown's car. The girl joined John in his car. The clown was crazy and powerful, but John managed to distance himself and shoot at the clown from his car. John drove into a large building, breaking the door with his car. Unfortunately, John's car suffered significant damage during this pursuit. John and the girl, named Kuwait, got out of the car. Kuwait was stubborn and annoyed John, 
who wondered how he would fix the car. Suddenly, the clown, Sweet, reappeared. Kuwait, frightened, left John alone and alerted Sweet to his presence. A fierce battle between Sweet and John ensued, with Sweet proving to be strong and violent. He managed to strike John. Suddenly, Sweet heard a song that delighted him. John also expressed his appreciation for the song, despite being in a fight. Due to the song, Sweet left John alone, who agreed to attend Sweet's theatrical performance. Afterward, he asked Sweet what would happen next. So, Sweet told John that if he could watch the theatrical performance, he would let him go and spare his life. Sweet changed into a suit and took the stage, while Kuwait sat next to John, and they watched Sweet's theatrical performance. The performance was terrible, and John fell asleep during it. After the show, John told Sweet that it was good, but Sweet became angry and wanted to kill him. Kuwait agreed with John, saying that the performance was awful. At that moment, Sweet calmed down and asked Kuwait how he could make the performance perfect. John then realized that Sweet was insane. They left Sweet and set fire to the place. John fixed the car and took Kuwait with him. He assured her that he would do a good deed for her and take her where she wanted to go, even though she had threatened to kill him and put him in danger. The story then takes us to a place called Vegas, where people are cannibals. They see two men tied up and placed in barrels, meant to be eaten by the cannibals. Before the man could kill them, Officer Stone and his team arrived and killed the butcher and the people with him. Officer Stone offered the two men he saved to join his team. Mike and Seth agreed to join Officer Stone's team and were warmly welcomed. Stone informed them that there was a mission they needed to succeed in to become part of his team. Their mission was to kill anyone who stole items from the military base. Two men indeed tried to steal things, and Mike ended up killing one of them. Seth disagreed with Mike's actions but didn't want to kill them. Mike shot the other man in the leg to prevent him from dying, and Seth argued that this was wrong. However, Mike pointed out that they were not murderers but people who wanted to live. They decided to join Officer Stone's team. Kuwait saw the man who killed her brother and tried to kill him, but they shocked her with an electric device, along with John. They took John and Kuwait to meet Stone. Seth and Mike took John's car and his belongings, leaving John frustrated. Stone's assistant noticed John's Chicago map and seemed surprised. He took the map to Stone, who wanted to know who drew it and how they knew all the police checkpoints. John tried to deceive Stone but failed when Kuwait spat in his face. Stone took John and Kuwait, tied them up, and subjected them to severe torture to make John reveal who drew the map. After enduring much torture, John refused to confess. Stone decided to take them to a high place and throw them off. Seth, however, felt sympathetic and didn't want them to die. They quickly escaped before Stone could change his mind. Meanwhile, Kuwait intended to kill Stone for killing her brother, but he wasn't present. She killed Stone's assistant brutally and found a large map on the wall, indicating Stone's location in the main precinct in Topeka. Kuwait returned to John, and when he asked her where she wanted to go, she lied and said she wanted to go to Topeka, the city where Stone was currently located. John had no idea about her true intentions. John told Kuwait about his mission to Chicago and how, if he succeeded, he could live in San Francisco. He mentioned that he couldn't remember anything about his family and had only one childhood photo. On the road, large trucks were chasing John's car, pushing it from behind. This led John to forcefully enter one of the large trucks, where he encountered a woman named Tess. Tess asked John why he had been kidnapped, and she called her grandmother, informing her that she had John now. Tess's grandmother got into the truck and they drove off together. I asked him to go and get very important medicine for his grandmother from a woman named Imbar. But John refused, saying he had a very important mission and that it might make him late. So, his grandmother told him that if he could bring her the medicine, she would provide his car with all the necessary protections, and she would give him weapons and ammunition to help him in his difficult task. Of course, John agreed to his grandmother's offer because he wanted the ammunition. Kuwait said to John that she was upset about the offer he had accepted, and there was no need for them to delay themselves. But he told her that he had to agree because he needed the ammunition and weapons because the road was risky and there were many criminals. John reached Imbar's house, but Imbar thought they were people chasing her, so she offered them a drink, and they lost consciousness. Afterward, she tied them up and asked them to confess that they had come for her. They told her that they were sent by her grandmother to get herbs for her grandmother's treatment. Imbar apologized to them and treated them. She gave them the herbs. John asked her why she lived alone in this place. She told him that she had no other place, and this is where she planted. John thanked her for the herbs and continued on his way. On his way, he was pursued by a group of people, 
and he managed to escape from them. He entered a dark place, which turned out to be a cinema. So, John and Kuwait decided to stay there until morning and watched a movie on the cinema screen and enjoyed their time. On the second day, John went to the truck convoy to deliver the herbs to his grandmother and fulfill his promise. He met Kuwait and confessed to her that this was not medicine but poison, and he would give it to his grandmother because her medical condition was hopeless and had no cure. The grandmother drank the poison and bid farewell to her granddaughter with tears and told John that the car would be prepared as promised. She instructed her granddaughter and told her that all the trucks were now hers, and she must take care of them. The grandmother died and they placed her in the car and blew it up. Kuwait prepared John's car as the grandmother had promised, and John took it and continued on his way. Kuwait began to feel guilty because she was going to take John to stone without him knowing but she remained silent. While on the road, they saw a large overturned truck, and they searched it for anything useful. Kuwait found a drink and gave it to John, which was drugged and he lost consciousness. When he woke up, he found a letter from Kuwait confessing everything and telling him that she loved him, so she decided to take matters into her own hands. John was very angry after reading the letter. We go to Kuwait, who manipulated two of the soldiers to easily enter Tropica. They indeed entered the city. Afterward, Kuwait killed them and entered the city in the car and wandered around. A policewoman stopped her and asked for her ID but Kuwait quickly escaped in the car. They informed Stone that Kuwait was in the city, and Stone ordered all the officers to find Kuwait and kill her. The police car surrounded Kuwait's car, and Stone asked her to go to a place to talk. Stone went to the place, and Stone's car appeared, and he threw grenades at it, causing Kuwait's car to flip over. Suddenly, a missile hit Stone's car, and we know that John launched the missile to save Kuwait. John quickly took Kuwait away from Tropica. When Kuwait woke up and realized that she was the one who saved him, she told him that he should have killed Stone. Kuwait left the place and John followed her. Suddenly, lightning struck the area, and John quickly took Kuwait inside. She asked him why he was afraid of the lightning, and John told her that it was a chemical lightning storm caused by a nuclear reactor explosion after the world lost electricity. He told Kuwait that they had to stay inside the restaurant until this storm passed and it would take a long time. Kuwait shared her past memories with John, telling him that she used to work on a farm with her brother. They found out that there was a city where life was good. They moved to the city and Kuwait's finger was cut off due to a mistake she made. She separated from her brother and worked as a maid for wealthy people. She and her brother were treated very cruelly and ruthlessly by these people. She found her brother's location and went to check on him, witnessing how he was also subjected to humiliation and degradation. The restaurant owner saw them and decided to punish her brother, cutting off his ear and hanging it around his neck. He was going to hand her brother over to the authorities, but Kuwait slaughtered him, killed all the guards, and escaped with her brother. After that, Stun killed her brother, as we saw at the beginning of the events. John told Kuwait to forget about revenge and the terrible events that happened to her in the past. He suggested going with him to Chicago to complete the mission and then live together in San Francisco. However, Kuwait was determined to stick to her stance, and John advised her to let go of some of her burdens. They played together in the courtyard and they were happy. When John woke up, he couldn't find Kuwait and thought she hadn't carried out his plan, so she left to seek revenge on Stone. However, when he went to Arabia, he found Kuwait there, preparing to go to Chicago with John. John was delighted to see her. They reached another place with many captives. Kuwait told Seth that this place held memories for him. He explained that when he was young, his mother didn't love him, and his stepfather didn't either. They made him work in acting to exploit him for money. He became very successful, and even a dog he had in a TV show was liked by people. When the dog was killed by Kuwait everyone was horrified. Kuwait was sentenced to 20 years in prison until the end of the world. After Swiat was released from prison due to the end of the world he went to his mother and stepfather, kidnapped them and imprisoned them until they died of hunger. When Swiat and Seat left the place, they found that all the men had died, and they discovered that Stone had killed them all. When Stone killed all the men, he thought that Swiat and Seat had also died and ordered the men and Mike to make sure everyone was dead. Swiat was about to kill Mike, but Seat told him that Mike would lead them to Stone's location, so Swiat spared Mike. Swiat, Mike, and Seat went to seek revenge against Stone. At the same time, John and Kuwait finally arrived in Chicago. John called out for someone to answer him because the city had no doors. A place opened in front of them, and John and Kuwait entered and went underground. There was no one there for John to talk to and he didn't know what to do. A voice told John to take the package that appeared in front of him, 
which would lead him to Rivalin in San Francisco. John laughed, took the package, and continued with Kuwait. While John was driving, he realized that the gas was running out and told Kuwait they needed to get some gasoline for the car. John arrived at the gathering place of men who worked like him. He entered a restaurant and Kuwait went to get gasoline. There, John met a woman named Mary, who had liked him for a long time. Kuwait talked to Mary and felt jealous of John. Mary left to talk to John and coaxed him into revealing that he had a shipment to deliver to San Francisco, and in return, he would live with them forever. When Mary learned all the information, she wanted to go deliver the shipment instead of John to claim the reward for herself. She went to the bar and told everyone about John's shipment and the reward for whoever delivered it to the location. When the men heard this, chaos erupted in the bar, and each one wanted to take the shipment for themselves. A battle ensued, and John and Kuwait killed everyone in the bar. Kuwait also killed Mary. John and Kuwait left the bar, and John gave Kuwait the keys to the car so she could drive. Kuwait was very happy about this but started fiddling with John's things, including an old photo of John. John stopped the car to look for the photo, and at that moment, a group of people appeared and stole the car. John was very upset with Kuwait and scolded her because he had owned the car for 20 years, and it was all he had, except for the shipment inside. They decided to walk to find the people who had stolen the car. After some time, they located the people who had stolen the car and decided to hide and infiltrate their group to retrieve John's car. I found clothes like theirs, and they entered among them. These people were crazy and they revered a priest, giving him anything they found as a gift. Among these things was an Arab car, which John stole to give as a gift to the priest. When the priest saw the Arab car, he was delighted because it was equipped with weapons and supplies. John told him loudly not to touch the Arab car, leading to a battle where the priest defeated John. The man locked John up, but Kuwait later freed him and urged him to forget about the car and escape before anyone saw them and killed them. However, John refused, insisting on finding his car and challenging the priest to another fight. This time, a spark from the gun ignited and caused an explosion near John's car. The priest lost consciousness and his men took him away while leaving John behind. John searched for the shipment but couldn't find it, realizing that Kuwait had stolen it from the car and left. Thinking John had died in the explosion, Kuwait drove toward San Francisco to deliver the shipment while looking at the map. However, a dead animal on the road made Kuwait swerve the car and crash into a tree. At that moment, a thief who had set up this trap tried to steal the shipment from Kuwait. But a distant arrow killed the thief coming from Tessa's car. Kuwait found Tessa's trucks and was surprised to see John was also inside and alive. While she was relieved to see John alive, she scolded him severely for not listening to her and putting himself in danger. She had thought he had died when she heard the explosion and felt very sad for him. John tried to reconcile with Kuwait in every way until she forgave him. Tess then told them they couldn't go to San Francisco because a man named Sweet had waged a big and fierce war against Stone. This route would be very dangerous for them. Tess said she knew another way and would guide them along it. John agreed with Tess, and they got into her truck, along with her sister, to be guided on the alternative route. On the way, there was a very large wall of cars, and John drove in between them. At that time, Stone's men appeared and fired guns and missiles at John and Tess. It was a violent chase. Tess got into a car and fought alongside them against the cars, until Sweet appeared in his car and fired at Stone. However, Sweet didn't distinguish between the cars and shot at all of them. He set Stone's car on fire to kill him because he was killing anyone in his way and was crazy but he didn't die. Sweet threw Mike and Set away from the car. Sweet also jumped out of his car to kill Stone while Mike and Set were in shock from the strong impact of the car. Stone continued to chase Kuwait and John, and John was very determined to confront him, not knowing why he insisted on pursuing them. John collided with Stone's car in a strong impact, causing Kuwait to fall. Stone caught Kuwait, almost killing her, but John appeared and saved her. Kuwait gave Stone the gun and told him he had to kill himself to end the suffering and pain. John and Kuwait embarked on a long journey in their car, finally managing to reach San Francisco after much hardship. John reached the city's entrance, where Riflin met them and took the shipment. She was delighted that he had successfully completed this challenging mission. John, overjoyed, expressed his desire for Kuwait to join him in San Francisco, planning for both of them to enter the city together. However, Riflin stopped them and reminded John that the agreement was for him alone to receive the reward, and Kuwait couldn't accompany him. Despite Kuwait's insistence, John was adamant about not entering the city without her. Knowing John's stubbornness, 
Kuwait took a drastic step, shooting him in the shoulder, ensuring that the soldiers inside the city would provide him with medical treatment. Kuwait then left in her car, leaving John behind. They did eventually take John into the city and treated his injury. The time they had all been waiting for arrived, to discover what was inside the shipment that John and Kuwait had struggled so hard to deliver to Riflin. To their surprise, it turned out to be ice cream. However, Riflin had another task in mind for John. A month passed, and John enjoyed the comforts of the city, living in a clean place, and even having a well-equipped house. John woke up and prepared breakfast for himself to savor a delicious meal. He rode his bicycle to explore the city, where everyone treated him kindly and knew his name. Despite all this, John wasn't happy with what he saw or experienced. It became clear that everything surrounding John was a false representation, part of Riflin's plan to keep him with them. John approached Riflin, expressing his desire to leave this place. Riflin told him that his family's home was already in the city and offered to take him there. She took John to his old home, where he saw many pictures of himself and his family, recalling memories of his past. He remembered the days when the world was ending, riding in the car with his father. His father let John drive, leading to an accident where John crashed into a wall because he was too young to drive. At that time, a woman hit him and stole the car. Young John continued his journey but stumbled upon the same car, the one that had stayed with him for twenty years. Riflin informed John that he belonged to this place, and that's why she had been searching for him for so long. But even after all this, John refused to stay and preferred to leave. That's when Riflin lost patience, and the men aimed their guns at John. At that moment, Riflin revealed a crucial truth to John. She explained that everything in this life was fake, and all the people he saw around him were imposters. She had orchestrated all this to test John with a difficult task that he had to complete unwillingly. She revealed that all cities were participating in a massive race, and the city that won would receive a tremendous prize. Riflin wanted that prize for herself and required John to participate in the competition. John felt compelled to join this race, knowing that everyone who had been part of his journey would also be in it, including Mary, whom they had believed was dead. Meanwhile, Kuwait had decided to pursue individuals carrying shipments to cities and steal them. She would then give these stolen goods to those in need. Her reputation grew among the cities. As Kuwait was driving her car, she encountered a trap set by a mysterious woman and several masked men. They asked Kuwait if she knew her brother, John, as they were searching for him, and that's where the series ended.